this morning. I introduced, I will come to you shortly. So again, it's me now and I want to introduce myself first. I am the artistic director of this uh, cultural quarter you are in. And uh, I've done this work since 25 years and we have developed the project uh, year by year. And it's kind, um, <clears throat> if you talk about expanded sculpture, you could also say it's like an expanded project, institutional project. Um, the exhibitions we do, they improved very much. We got completely new space and you will see in the end when we make the tour, uh, in real what I'm talking about. What I try to talk about one aspect of our work, which is maybe linked to the theme of the sculpture network, but also very important for our work. It's not so much the term about it, uh, advanced technology in sculpture, um, which is more interesting when we do exhibition with Ars Electronica for our space right now. What I'm talking about is more like expanded sculpture, uh, like in a, in a way where you say, how can you deal with a space like that <clears throat> with a kind of expanded idea of sculpture. Um, I want, just want to give some basic ideas how we, how we approach this work. It's not a kind of a little, some examples from art history, but it's the idea is more to show you the way we think and how we, uh, how we try to work. So basically, when you uh, talk about time-based sculpture or space and sculpture, and you compare it with the classic idea of sculpture, I think you have these six aspects which you have to deal with. Um, like in the, in the classical way, where if you just take a very traditional sculpture like this one, or a more contemporary one like from the Forum Metal I was uh, mentioning, this morning from the 70s, you always have the problem, or not the problem, but the idea that it's an object which is kind of still autonomous, it's, uh, it has a, a kind of material, it's a materialized form, it, it needs a certain distance uh, for, the, for the visitor, basically, and it has this kind of um, um, uh, not so much site-specific idea how you could work with sculpture anyway. So this is um, uh, one aspect. Um, we were dealing with all the time with sculpture in space. In German it's maybe more simple. You can say verräumlichen oder verzeitlichen einer Skulptur. Uh, and there are some different ways you can do it, of course, like in art history, you're all familiar with that, where you have the first and most important thing that also was kind of the way uh, when, our, when our institution was founded in the 90s, it was the kind of uh, work, installation-oriented work, site-specific projects. This one maybe is the most site-specific also from, uh, from the Forum Metal I was mentioning. It's the Nike, uh, it became very famous because it was a kind of scandal about it. They put it on the, on the top of the art school, right near the Danube, and they had to remove it after two years. And now, it, then it was bought by the, uh, by the Architectural Museum in Frankfurt. It's still there after 40 years. We'll try to bring it back for a visit in Linz next year. It's still working, so it's still there, but it never was exhibited again after 79. So it was kind of an interesting, also in terms of local history of art conflicts, interesting project, but a very site-specific piece, but still a sculpture. Uh, another way, of course, is to mechanize sculptures. You're all familiar with that. Another way of kind of getting into space and time is this kind of idea of nomadic sculpture, like the beautiful project from Escher. For, for Münster. Another way is uh, like to uh, ephemeral sculpture, you know, like uh, in changing the kind of material where you, uh, for example, this kind of immersive projects, Eliasson does, but many others, of course, or the invisible sculpture, like the beautiful project from Boldansky in the 90s in Berlin. So these are all kind of strategies to, to get into a kind of expanded idea of sculpture. Another one would be like the growing aspect, like the Pavel Altamer piece from the last uh, Münster. Uh, or, yeah. And so this is kind of one aspect is what's happening to the object when you put it in time or space and when you change the material. The other as aspect is what's, what's the relationship between the sculpture and the body uh, in terms not only the body of the visitor but also the body of the artist. So, what, this is just a reference. The most important thing was 
that you yet that you remove the pedest the pedestal that you have a kind of equal relationship between the body of the visitor and the sculpture in German you have this beautiful term die Gebärde der Besichtigung which means that you still have this kind of really religious attitude in some certain extent to the traditional sculpture another way of course is like the land art where the uh, where the sculpture itself uh, uh, didn't need any pedestal anymore uh, and one very important aspect was like Robert Morris, like the one here where the scale of the body became the, uh, like the, the scale of the sculpture. And in following this tradition, if you mention artists like Tim Ulrichs, where they use their own artist body as a sculpture, but not as a performance piece. I'm not talking about performance, really as a sculpture. Um, and the really big reference for us when we work like site-specific with this extended idea of sculpture, of course, always has been Dan Graham, where for, the, uh, for me, uh, in a perfect way, the visitor themselves became an uh, essential part of the sculpture. The Graham, Graham, Dan Graham piece do not work without the visitors. So this was one important other step in sculpture and body to involve the visitor. Um, there I have another example. We did it in Linz a couple of years ago. It's a nice piece done by art students where you have this kind of, uh, people could, could kind of grab the objects, uh, <laughs> but they could not take them out. So still again, here you have the body of the, the body of the visitor is a part of the sculpture, of course. The piece is inside, but it's not working without the, uh, without the person. <coughs> Uh, you're familiar with this reference pieces. They are qu quite new, like Abramovich, this piece she did in Serpentine Gallery, where the, where the visitors came into this white space and she had these people there, and, and, and suddenly the, the visitors themselves doing the same thing, standing in front of that wall, and the whole piece becomes a sculpture, or the famous piece from Guangli a couple of years ago. Uh, again, using the pedestal in a very different way. So. You see, I'm just talking, giving a little uh, idea how we approach our projects ourselves. Um, again, just to sum it up, um, for us, uh, like the installation, site-specific work with art and artists inside and outside of the space, in the public space and in the museum space, always has been a kind of extended idea of sculpture in terms of space, time and body. And, um, and of course, the material itself. So I hope you will find some of these ideas when I show you now in the second part, uh, like our spaces and the, and the development of the project. Um, the first important thing is the parkour. Um, that's where we are. Uh, we are right here. Okay. So you see this is the main street of Linz and this is the cultural quarter. So you're familiar probably already with the uh, red space uh, out there. And this is the Ursulinenhof, it's the old Joyster, and this is the school we're using. Here you see it's a parking loft, and this is the shopping mall. And so that's, excuse me, <clears throat> here you see it again. And this is the space again uh, uh, we are using now for our exhibitions. So here is space, here is our home base, the art space. Here again is the Joyster we are in, and this is the extension of the art, the art space. And this is the, what I said this morning, this really interesting thing, that you have a kind of 4,000 square meter flat roof in the, right in the center of the city, which, uh, which you can kind of work on, which is not uh, a commercial <laughs> space, or which is like a, a space not used, like you will see on the shopping mall. They never used this space, and they never thought the space could be interesting, but also the parking loft, the top space, was, was never used. So. Uh, this is just a historic site of our uh, a historic photo of our uh, school of our art center. This is another one, and here you have now again like a drawing of the of the whole area. Again, here we are, and this is the space. So what happened? What we did is, and, and now remember what I said about extended sculpture, or extended idea of of growing. Um, we, we tried to find an idea, first was to find an idea to connect all this. And of course, we worked with artists right from the beginning, so we asked the uh, Atelier Bauwau to do a kind of basic idea how you could connect all these different, very different buildings. And they came up with a very good idea, which is still, we're working on that, 
is it's how you say wurzel in English, like the branch. Okay, so it, it, the branch already is something which is not finished, which is not fixed, which is not autonomous, which is growing all the time. And in an urban context, you could say working with art as an institution in public space or in half public space, the branch idea is a very good idea to work because it's an urban idea. It's, I mean, of course you have this process of city planning, but you also have, also have this kind of city growing thing, you know, like adapting a city and on and on. So we thought this is a nice idea to kind of uh, create, even to create this art space. So again, this, this is the drawing, now you see what we did. This was the original parkour, uh, uh, the Bauwau built. You will see pictures later on. So the red one is like connecting everything, you know. So we connected with our art space right here, with the parking loft. We connected it with the, uh, with the roof of the, uh, of the shopping mall. We connected it with the church. Uh, then you could walk through the church, you could walk out here again, you could, you could walk into this building. So you see everything was like, suddenly in a way, was one parkour. And then we started to create, of course, you will see later on, we worked with kind of temporal art pieces, we changed on the parkour, but we also extended the parkour. So the next step was this. Sorry, uh, it's one picture. It was not in the same year. <laughs> Um, so we first we built the tower, you will see today, it was kind of a, a vertical, because the interesting thing was of this flat roof that you could walk like a, a, like a flaneur, like a city flaneur. You, normally you only have this kind of vertical view from upstairs, we, just, we had first like a horizontal uh, a parkour and then we built the vertical uh, tower and then we built this kind of steel structure. Uh, which connects again as a kind of in-between space. It's an inside-outside space, so it has no roof, but it's still a space and it can be changed or used by artists, uh, uh, which connects again our art center with the, uh, with, the, with the rooftop. And this again here is something we want to do in the future. What you can see here where this kind of red circle is, it's the main street, a very half heavy traffic street. Uh, there is a still very crowded parking loft and there was a gas station and they removed the gas station and we rented the area where the gas station is. So now we are already have the, the basement of the, and, and the top floor of the parking loft and we can use it for projects. So now you see some pictures. This was the parkour the Bauwau created. So it was this kind of Again, uh, contrast work, working with a kind of wood structure in the, right in this urban context. So this was this kind of um, <coughs> pathways. This is a connection to the church. Uh, this was done by a very, uh, uh, by Concept and Bottini Gartmann. Maybe you know they're very advanced Swiss architects always working with this kind of uh, uh, wood structure and wood bridges. Then, in the first year, we, we, when, we, when we did it for 2009, in the first, the first edition, we put up a high wheel on the rooftop <laughs> and we asked the Spanish artist Mayra Lopez to do something with the wheel. So she, this was the opening. So it was like a performative. Again, you see this kind of wheel as a sculpture, how it changed. And Mayra did the, on, on the, the first part of her project, you see now the, the second one in the end. She painted the wheel, so all the, uh, where the people sit, it was green and the whole structure was red. This is the tower. This was done by an um, artist from Colombia. <clears throat> he, had, he created this big, um, how do you say, ants, which were kind of creeping up the, like as a sculpture, creeping up the, uh, up the tower. This was done by a bamboo tower. We made a contrast to the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. You will see in the end. Uh, Wen Chi Wang, this uh, Taiwanese artist, uh, uh, doing a, like a bamboo cupola. Here you can see both in the night. And this, everything you can see up there is part of the parkour. So it's, uh, then we removed it again. But here you see now the steel structure. <clears throat> you will see it in the end when we go up. 
but you can see here we also integrated like a, an, an open air cinema for the sum, summer because it's uh, in in our center there's also an uh, like an art house movie theater and in the summer they can go up to the roof and they can show the, the, the films at night <clears throat> Here again you see this, these bridges to the attic. And then we also use the attic spaces, like the old, very old from the 17th century. So people would go really from the parking loft into the attic. So it's like really like a very urban uh, way of, of creating a parkour where you have these different time levels. This is a work by Serge Spitzer, 2009 he did with one million steel, uh, how do you say, Kugeln? So, um, uh, because Linz is a steel city, and again, it's like a uh, was like a very uh, interesting sculptural piece. You can see. And now I show you some of our expanded sculptural projects. Some we did in the last five years. I'm always talking about five years uh, with water, like with frozen water, moving water, real water, me me mediated water, or media water, falling water, different aggregations inside, outside. So start with a very kind of st uh, static project by Ursula Stalders. She collected for five years everything in the Lagoon of Venice. And then we made this kind of Lagoon of Venice on the top roof. Um, this is a piece by an upper Austrian artist. He made a frozen, frozen ice tubes on the hottest Arctic in the summer, the coldest work. So it's ice, the people, when they would uh, grab, they would kind of be... This is done, were done by two Brazilian artists in the attic of the church. Um, there is a video, but I don't think we have time enough. It was a kind of a neon installation with move, which moves like waves. <clears throat> this is a, uh, again on a rooftop. Uh, one of these beautiful uh, fountains from yet behind where you have this uh, uh, kind of um, water walls which go up and down and where you kind of in suddenly inside and you cannot go out anymore without going through the water. Or oh, this were done by Dash 7, it's an, an artist group from New York, or based in New York. They're doing this project, you can see now, of course, this is a kind of advanced media project, where you, uh, where you, when you go through the, um, it was a waterfall swing, you have this kind of water coming down, and when it would swing through the water, the water would stop. But you see a lot of projects like that, when you go, for example, to the Expo in Milano, you see a lot of this kind of uh, controlled water, water wall project. Here you can see. And of course here already you see the importance of the body and the art piece. I mean, it's, that's obvious. This was, I think, one of the most beautiful projects we did with Fuku Nakaya, this uh, old uh, lady from Japan doing fog projects since more than 40 years, where we had this kind of really beautiful fog on one of our parking lofts and of course the sculpture always changed uh, depending on the wind. So you had a really very different kind of uh, appearance of these forms of this sculpture. And again, this kind of people moving in, bodies moving in and looking from the distance. Sorry. Here you can see. This was a project from Stefan, Stefan Banz where he, f uh, he did the water in our big space inside with a kind of transparent folia where people can walk in. And so this is one, one kind of category of projects. Another one would be uh, this one. It, it, this again is kind of advanced media, at least by that time, 2009. It's really a nice piece by Paul de Marinis where you you see the people, uh, you see this kind of structure up, up uh, uh, above, when the, and, the, and the, the rain is controlled, and when you are, uh, and the umbrella is working like a, like a loudspeaker. So when you, are, when you are, have the umbrella and, and the rain drops down, you hear singing in the rain. It's really working. So, and of course, it's, it's an interesting way of sculpture because you cannot see it still, the people are part of it, but the sculpture itself is invisible.
This was also a very nice project by the Russian artist Leonid Tishkov. He had a kind of moon you could borrow. So this is the chapel outside when you walk on the red, red square, you see the, the chapel. So this was kind of the home base of the moon and people could come to us and they could say, I would like to borrow the moon, the moon for two days. And then the only option was that they had to uh, go to their home and, and, and mount the moon that everybody could see it. Like put it outside of the window or inside of the window. You can see, for example, this is a, it's another uh, somewhere just across the, the main street of Linz. So it was kind of a sculpture moving through Linz, being there, and then again. This is uh, another way, of course, kind of invisible sculpture, a beautiful work by Wolfgang Georgsdorf, also an artist originally from Linz, now living for many years in Berlin. He doing, he's, he's built a smeller, so it's basically, he does smell projects all his life. It's a Middle East artist. <laughs> so you could smell it, but you only could see the tubes. So one aspect, and the third one, Last one I want to show you, where really the body also is kind of very important in terms of kind of finishing or even building the sculpture. This is a project by a Viennese uh, artist uh, architect group. Um, uh, they, they built this kind of net where the people could walk through. They could take the normal staircase or they could take their way up through the net. This is, we redid an old piece by Haushucker one of these uh, uh, projects they did by that time with this kind of uh, matratze filled with air and a kind of uh, billiard place, a box ring, up in this uh, steel structure. Let's see. Again, only completed with the people. This is another piece where you uh, could hit the ball and in the, in the, when you were hit it, you, they took a picture, the artist took a picture automatically, so everybody was kind of uh, catched in the wrong moment, you know, when, you, when you are addressed, where you cannot control yourself. Oh, this was also a project by a, by a Taiwanese artist, the Bubble Man. You know, people really thought there's really a person on there, but it was just, of course, a, a puppet. So in the end, also another body project with Michael Kinz, a very important Austrian uh, sculpture, where he, uh, the, where we would just use the parking loft uh, as a place where people could, uh, yeah, retreat. Or how do you say? As he also asked. Okay. Uh, so maybe in the end we can see one short film before you, maybe you want to ask some questions. So we have the two of them. Uh, which is also, also an interesting film because it was done by Maida Lopez, the second part of her Highway project, and which is really a kind of piece um, we like very much because what you would, will see, uh, maybe we can, we can see it first. Okay, maybe you can stop it. 
So basically, in the end, first we wanted, of course it would have been super to do a project like that in Rio, <laughs> but this is not possible, or this was not possible. So then we first had the idea to create certain lenses where you went, when you look through them, then the, you cannot see the red structure of the wheel, but this also didn't really work and then she made a kind of video. So it's uh, in the end, like in the entrance, before people really would enter the space where the wheel was, they would see the film first without kind of, and so again, it's a, it's a nice idea of how a sculpture could vanish somehow, but only medium is there. Okay, thank you very much.